Something a little bit different today, but I suppose you guys are going to expect that from me. So, in this time of boredom, I figured we could do something interesting we could check in on. I stumbled across the concept of ecospheres on an account called Life in Jars. It's pretty sweet, so you guys should check it out. I know we aren't exactly unique in doing this, plenty of others are making them, but I'm intrigued to make one for us. I was excited to learn we can make an ecosphere at home, with little in the way of resources. After finding us a suitable vessel, I went on one of my daily allowed walks to a nearby quiet park and collected up some water, sediments and aquatic plants. We need to leave some airspace at the top, although as per usual, I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing, so we're learning as we go. A south facing room will make a perfect home with lots of sunlight to keep our plants happy, which in turn will keep our organisms happy. However, direct sunlight will cause more algae to grow, so bear that in mind. Initially, I was concerned that we weren't going to get much in the way of interesting organisms, but within minutes of setting the jar down in its new home, sediment began to settle, and it became obvious that life was abundant in our little ecosphere. Now, as much as I love nature and science, my knowledge of water organisms is basically non-existent. So we're going to be learning together. Some of the first things that made themselves known were snails. For example, this large plant orbis species, notable for its large flat shell. I'm also particularly fond of these stunning black blue moss bladder snails, who always seem to be dancing around to their own choreography. I love the way their underbellies almost seem to shimmer in the light like crystals or stars. Plus, there are several others I'm yet to identify. I'm really happy to see these guys because they're already doing a great job of keeping glass clean. I could also see Daphnia swimming around, but they were harder to catch on camera. Flatworms began to swim around the edges of the glass as well. And these bloodworms kept zapping by a little too quickly for me to get a good shot. By the second day, the glass and water had cleared up significantly and more of our organisms had come to say hello. In particular, what seemed to be several kinds of shrimp. I'm still working on identifying these. Maybe you guys know. Let me know in the comments. Here, with this large cluster of snails, shrimp, and a rather large flatworm, we have what appears to be a water mite crawling near the surface. Other than that, we also had a particularly interesting resident appear. I think this is what's called a predaceous diving beetle. They encase themselves in a bubble as they go underwater so they can breathe whilst under. In this shot, we can even see the hairs that help keep his bubble in place around him. Luckily for this guy, there are branches stuck out of the water for him to surface on. The snails and the shrimp seem to be getting along well with the snails cleaning the glass whilst the shrimp ride them like noble steeds. As far as I can tell, the shrimp quite like the things that grow on the snail's shells and will clean the shells for them in a kind of symbiosis. There's a lot to unpack in this microenvironment, and this is only what's happened in the first couple of days. It'll be really interesting to see how this develops over the coming weeks and months. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. If you want to see more, please subscribe and let me know in the comments what you guys think. For those of you interested in my other kinds of videos, I have a number of them in the works. Prop builds, restorations, repairs and even some model building. So please do stick around. See ya!